Every man has come out of a sort of crazy notion that our chairman had 10, 15 years ago when he first got involved with our original site in Hampstead, which was, why can't cinema be something a little bit different? Why, why can't you have a decent glass of wine? Why can't you sit in a comfortable seat? Why can't you be surrounded by teams who look like they're excited and, and motivated and wanting to be um, looking after you? Uh, and and it, it sounds so ridiculously simple, but um, when you're talking about large scale multiplexes, the, the scale of, of what they do is, is, is such a different league. Um, and we focus on dealing with smaller, intimate venues and given that high-end hospitality that makes the evening, the event, so much more than just about the film. Um, we've succeeded in bringing people in to the cinema, into an everyman venue, up to an hour before the film starts because the, the social side of things, the hospitality, the food, the drink, the staff, are an important part of that evening. Cinema going is incredibly healthy in the UK at the moment and, and growing nicely. Uh, it's, it's increased 3-4% per annum over the last 10 years. That's exciting and it's important for us operating. We are within the cinema market, um, but we're not as quite as dependent on the underlying success of individual films that fuel that broader market. We've succeeded in flipping the equation, which is really important, from people buying a trip to cinema based on purely on the film and the typical equation is usually, I want to see that film, what time's it on, where is it showing, and, and is there free car parking? We've managed to flip that around to, I want to go out next week, I really want to go to the Everyman again, what's showing? And the moment we do that, people start taking slightly more chance on the types of films they see. So as exciting, as important as films like The Joker or Star Wars are, and they are important for us, we do get a disproportionate number of people coming along to see some of the smaller, sometimes more interesting quality films, all 900 of them that lie between those tent poles. Our financial results continue to be exciting and in line with city expectations. Our adjusted EBITDA is up 61% to 6.6 .6 million, but clearly that's been massively inflated by the IFRS 16 changes. But on a light for light basis, we're at 20% growth, which is still very exciting. That's been driven by revenue growth of 16%, 29 million. Uh, that's off the back of admissions growth of 9% to 1.5 million. And, and also the growth in our underlying KPIs, such as F&B spend, which has gone up some 13% to £6.95. The rollout strategy is a massively important part of every man's growth story. And it's going very well, both in the moment and also uh, looking forward to the years ahead. We are, we're going to open a total of seven new sites this year. We opened two already in the first half in Horsham and Newcastle a total of seven screens between them. And by Christmas, we'll have opened another five in Cardiff, Wokingham, London Broadgate, Manchester and Clitheroe. And it's a really interesting spread of sites, actually, because in there you've got the urban centres of the likes of Manchester and Newcastle, but you've also got the smaller market town opportunities like, like Clitheroe and Horsham. So we've got a total of 15 signed up, including those five by Christmas, but we're working on a pipeline that's constantly evolving. Those 15 will open across the, the coming years right through to 22. But part of the big opportunity that exists for us at the moment is going back into the high street, into sometimes uh, retail or leisure space that's been disused for a while or even vacated recently. And that's, that's massively exciting, not only because we're able to be part of the regeneration of high streets, but also because those opportunities can often happen very quickly. So some of the deals that we're working on right now that are in legals could open in 2020 or in 2021. They can work very quickly. Uh, that also means that we have increasing confidence in, in the number of dots on the map, effectively. Uh, you're at 28. We've committed to get us to 43 already. And, and quite honestly, we could probably put 100 dots on the map across the UK. Now, in reality, we won't be able to unlock all of those, but at the moment, our current rate of UK expansion of six or seven sites per year, we're, we're very confident of. I did say UK deliberately then, because we've also just signed our first international site in Dublin, which is an important step for us, uh, and that will be opening summer next year. And clearly, our belief is that the Irish market will take this offer as well as the UK, if not better, actually. The Irish cinema going is higher than in the UK. Uh, I think they'll love this offer and embrace it, and that will clearly unlock another market for us. New venue growth is clearly an important part of our growth story, but just as importantly for us is 
to continue to see growth in our existing venues. The growth in the food and drink revenue, for example, is massively important. And we've made some great steps on that last few years. And that continued into the first half this year with a 13% growth in our F&B spend. That's been through a combination of continued menu development, making sure that we tailor and exploit new food offers. We launched anti-pasty plates this year, which have gone down terrifically and constantly curating the, the, the drinks side of things. We're very sensitive about our staff having technology that allows us to serve customers more effectively so that they can actually spend more time talking to our customers. And so it's not taking away the interaction, but just making things like payment and, and the dollar side of queuing, etc., more efficient. Otherwise, as well, we've launched a new app, which is very exciting. And that's been a lot broader than just booking and, and schedule access, which, which is very good, but also being able to access Apple Music for the soundtracks for the films that you're booking. We've done some great pop-up activity. We did Summer Love Again at King's Cross. Uh, we've just recently completed uh, a great pop-up at The Grove. That helps us just continue to take the brand out to our customers, even when maybe in the summer when weather tends to keep people sometimes distracted from, from coming to um, every man. And finally, we're building some terrific partnerships with other companies such as Green and Blacks, American, Wild Turkey. And it's a true partnership where we, we can bring those brands into our venues, but we can also take every man out to those brands. And it's a reciprocal relationship. And those are starting to build and have some great value for us as well. We remain really excited and confident about the Everyman story and, and, and its opportunity. We've talked about the rollout of across the UK and, and clearly that's an important part of our growth and we're excited about that. We're also very excited about the underlying opportunity to grow existing venues. Increasing the frequency of our existing customers is a massively important opportunity. So our membership schemes, the use of the app, et cetera, um, will be an important focus going forward. Um, and then there's the international opportunity, which is obviously a big, important step and exciting for us. So we continue to deliver in line with city expectations. We've got this amazing proven model that's continuing to be successful uh, wherever we take it across the UK uh, and just remain incredibly excited about the future.